The materials that you'll need for the beefcake stone are 1638 size 6 Orbis dry fly hooks, Zappa Gap, Orange Loco foam, 2 millimeter brown tying foam, 6 aught brown thread, mottled natural bustard, thin skin, and medium brown rubber legs. The next slide here gives the recipe for the pattern in text. It also gives us specific measurements for the cuts and the angles of the pieces of foam that you see in the picture. To start the pattern off, debarb the dry fly hook. You're going to take the bottom piece of loco foam, which is the orange piece, and you're going to punch that hook through the tail end about a half inch in from the tip of the tail. Make sure that the reflective or pearlescent side is facing down when the hook goes into the vise. Once you get that punctured through the foam, secure the hook in the vise. After you attach the thread to the hook, you put down a thin layer of Zappa Gap across the top of the hook shank. Just behind the eye of the hook, we'll tie in a scrap piece of foam that's about one eighth of an inch wide, five or six inches long. This makes it a little bit easier to work with. The purpose of this piece of foam is it's going to form the underbody. The purpose of this foam is it forms the underbody. As you wrap it over the hook shank toward the rear, keep a reasonable amount of tension on it. It should have approximately the same amount of width as it runs the length of the hook shank. Tie this in at the bend of the hook and snip off the excess. Once this is accomplished, we'll come in with a strand of brown rubber legs. I'm going to tie this in at the rear of the hook. I prefer to tie in one strand, lay down a couple wraps, and bend the end back toward the rear of the hook forming the two tail fibers of the adult salmon fly. Once you have these fibers secured with several tight wraps, you can snip them off to a, an approximate length. We want them to extend a little bit, a quarter inch or so, past the end of the foam when the foam is tied in. If need be, you can adjust them later on. At this point, we're going to reach uh, from an under, underneath and we're going to wrap that thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. We'll compress, squeezing the foam as we lay down those thread wraps. Ideally, you want to get about four or five wraps in each spot to hold that in place. Once the bottom piece is secured, you can rotate your vise, lay down a thin little dip of Zappa Gap, and in that same location, you're going to tie on the top piece of brown tying foam. Once again, securing it with four to five wraps of thread. Once you've started this process and you have that first segment made, the thread will return to the hook shank, moving forward at about an eighth of an inch or thereabout increments. You're gonna move forward until you have three body segments made. Once all three segments are complete, you'll grab your piece of thin skin for the wing material, and we're very simply going to tie that in on the top part of that segment, making sure that the back tip of the wings is extended at least an eighth of an inch or a little more past the end of the abdomen. After this is firmly secured, we'll return the thread to the hook shank moving forward and forming an additional body segment. At this point, you can tie down in a second location, the front end of the wing material. And then you're going to bring in your knotted rubber legs. Secure them with one or two firm wraps on each side. Adjust them at that point if you need to. and Throw down an additional wrap or two to hold them in place. thread will once again be returned to the hook shank and we'll make one final segment. The 
Notice also, if you feel like it for your convenience, we've taken a piece of wire and twisted that over the rear leg. It just makes it a little easier to keep it out of our way. At this point, we're going to taper off the bottom part and the top part of the head so that it presents a, an accurate silhouette when viewed from below as far as its proportion to the rest of the body. Come in with a strand of the brown rubber legs and secure these with a couple wraps directly on top of the head. Just behind that tie-in point, we'll place a small drop of Zappa Gap, and your indicator foam will sit directly on top of this. Helps bind it all together. Make sure that indicator foam sits on top of the antenna so it forces them outward over the head. After you've secured that and snipped the indicator to an approximate length that you see there in the video, come in with the last couple steps here in the same way that you secured the first set of legs, you'll tie in the front legs. Again, the legs on my terrestrials, like I've said in other videos, I prefer to have them a little lengthy. If you're not comfortable with that extra length, you can clip those down to where, where you'd like to have them. At this point, you can whip finish or half hitch that in place. And when you have that secured, snip your thread. After you've snipped that off, we're going to rotate that upside down. And just for the sake of durability and longevity, we'll use a little Zappa Gap to bolster up the front two seams or segments of thread there, as well as down the sides where the tie-in points for each of the legs are. 